What's going on, everybody? It is Ramon Harper, executive pastor here at Change Church. I am sitting here with Dr. Darius Daniels. We just finished another one. I know. Another one. Feels it's like old school revival, man. man. I'm telling y'all. No <laughs> y'all watching service. our service on YouTube, wherever you at, something's happening here at yeah, Change Church. It is. Something's happening. It is. It's, it's a spiritual crazy. reawakening. Yeah. That's taking place, really. Yeah. 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 So great. if you haven't been, make sure you get here at Change yeah. Church. We got three locations, two in New Jersey. One in Los Angeles. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. But listen, it's the final word. Yes. So you just preached a sermon. Walking with the wind. Yeah. Walking in the wind. Yeah. Man, just give me a quick synopsis, but it's a point that you hit. You had three points. Yes. But it's a point you hit I, I need you to expound upon. So what, what did you want people to get? Well, what I want people to walk away with is this, that when you're a water walker, the exception, water walkers have to master the art of walking in the wind. Mm -hmm. And the wind represents the unexpected obstacles that are going to blow your way. Mm -hmm. That a lot of times people are admiring people who do exceptional things, not realizing that people doing exceptional things had to overcome exceptional odds. They're That's dealing right. with exceptional pressure. That's right. And if you don't know how to walk in the wind, you can't walk on water. And why do people think it won't be windy? Yeah. It's sad, but I think in part because those who walk on water don't talk about the wind enough. Mm. You know, you know, I mentioned, you know, I got a doctorate degree while I was planting a multi-site church and building churches and buying churches and in the midst of writing a book, but I didn't talk about how hard it was and the anxiety and all of the things I had to overcome to carry that out. I think mm. we tell the end of the story, but we don't say enough about the middle. That's so good. You talked about We've been talking about faith this whole time, but you yeah. talked about something, you took a different angle. You said we need long faith. Yeah. <laughs> so so explain that. What is, what is long faith? Because I heard a big faith, but yeah. you said long faith. Yeah, I think the emphasis on faith a lot is um, having strong faith. Mm -hmm. And that is not incom incorrect. Okay. I think it's incomplete. Mm -hmm. Like if you do a I think a, a accurate exegesis of the book of James, when James talk about God, the testing of our faith produces patience. Mm -hmm. Then for me, it says that God tests my faith with time and I don't just need strong faith. I need long faith because mm -hmm. it's one thing to believe big. It's another thing to keep on believing when it seems like believing isn't worth it. Mm -hmm. I, worth it. I don't want faith just to be strong. I need it to be long. Yeah. I need it to last until I get what I'm believing for. So good. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we get long faith? You gave us three points. Yes. So one, you said increase intimacy. Yes. Now you have to watch the sermon to get the whole spiritual side, yeah. but you did something at one of the campuses. Yeah. You talked about you made it a comparison to regular relationships yes. and increasing intimacy. Break that down a little bit yeah. because I think if people watching this, they just may not even be in church but they yeah. understand I'm in a relationship. How do you increase intimacy? See, intimacy requires an investment. Mm -hmm. Like you don't get to control intimacy. You get to control the things that you do that produce the intimacy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times in relationships, we lose that it factor. Yeah. And I am arguing, not all the time, but oftentimes, if you start tracing that relationship back to its initial stages, mm -hmm. you'll see that, that, that there were some things you were doing when you had the it factor yeah. that you're no longer doing. Mm -hmm. You made an investment. Yeah. And when you make an investment, the return on that investment is intimacy. Mm -hmm. And what happens is we get with people and we stop making that investment. Man, and then we wonder where the intimacy went. <laughs> the intimacy is on the other side of the investment. No yeah. investment, no intimacy. Man. The cost for intimacy is time. That's so good. That's good. Y'all know about intimacy. You remember you little growing up, it's like you on the phone, you falling asleep yeah. on the phone, you go to sleep. No, you hang yeah. up. You yes. hang up. <laughs> so you got to increase intimacy. But then I think something that's so important in today's culture, you yeah. talked about improving accuracy. Yes. And I think where we are as Christians, just this whole thing, we're getting so much information. Yeah. How do we increase, improve accuracy. Yeah, the, the fact of the matter is many people are believing in a God that they make, not a God that made them. You know, a God who agrees with what I agree with, who hates who I hate, loves what I love, a God who is okay with what I don't want to adjust. Mm. Yeah, a God who is, who is silent on issues I don't want him to speak about in my own life. Mm -hmm. And I think the danger of that and why God warns us against that is because whenever you create your own God, that God eventually is going to let you down. 
Mm -hmm. And so you live a life of, of chronic disappointment. Yeah. And I think it's important to realize that God gave us the Bible to be the grid and the filter that we put our concepts of, of him through. Yeah. And so if my concept of God doesn't make it through the filter of scripture, which I believe is the most reliable book on the planet. You yes. know how people say, man wrote the Bible. Man wrote everything you read. Absolutely. Yeah. And the people... <laughs> And when you look at the Bible, it's 1500, it took 1,500 years to compile that book. That's a long time for a conspiracy theory. Right. You know, and so for me, uh, it's clear that the grid we are to put our concept of God through mm -hmm. is the scripture. That's right. And uh, so that we're believing in a God that made us, not a God we make. Uh, so good. Listen, this is the final word. Y'all got to watch every week, man. This guy's dropping some major nuggets, but it is the final word. Take these principles and use them in your life. Yeah, that's a long sermon. I hope you enjoy it.